Yeah, there's some libertarian um, candidates for president and just libertarian thinkers that had a nice thought experiment of possibly legalizing, I've spoken about possibly legalizing basically all drugs. In your intuition, do you think a world where all drugs are legal is a safer world or a less safe world for the users of those drugs? It really depends on what we mean by legalization. So this is one of my beefs with this, you know, how these things are talked about. I mean, we have very few completely laissez-faire, you know, legal drugs. So even caffeine is one of the few examples. So for example, caffeine and tea and coffee is in that realm. Like there's no limits, no one's testing, there's no laws, regulation at any level of how much yeah. caffeine you're allowed to buy or how much in the price. But even like with this um, Starbucks, like nitro, there are rules with soda and with canned products, you can only put so much- In there, yeah. Yeah, so there's a, there's a this is FDA regulated. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of weird because there's a limit to sodas that's not there for energy drinks and other things. So, but- you know, so even caffeine, it depends on what product we're talking about. You, like if you're like Nodos and other caffeine products over the counter, like you can't just put 800 milligrams in there. The pills are like one or 200 milligrams. And so it's FDA regulated as an over-counter drug. Some of the most dangerous drugs in society, I would say arguably one of the most dangerous classes of drugs are the volatile anesthetics, huffing, people huffing gasoline and, you know, airplane glue, toluene, whatnot, um, severely damaging to the nervous system pretty much legal, but there's some regulation in the sense that there's a warning label, like it's legal to do it for, not that it necessarily, people, they're busting people for this, mm -hmm. but you know, it's against federal law to use this in a way other than intended type of, basically saying like, yeah, don't huff this, you know, right. um, your paint thinner or whatnot, at least keeps people from selling it for that. Like, uh, no, cause yeah. they're going to, they're going to go after that person. They're yes. not going to be able to find the 12 year old who's huffing. Yes. So anyway, just as some extreme ex examples at, at the end, and then, you know, even the, the so-called illegal, like Schedule 1 drugs, psilocybin, we do plenty in, in, um, in terms of Schedule 2, which is ironically less restrictive than psilocybin, but methamphetamine and cocaine, I've done human research with. My research has been legal. So they're scheduled compounds, but they're not completely illegal. Like you can do research with them with the appropriate licenses and um, uh, you know, approval. So there really is no such thing. And, and, and like alcohol, well, it's illegal if you're tw 12 years old or 18 years old or 20 years old. And for anyone, it's illegal to to be drinking it while you're driving. So there's always a nuance. It's, there's rules, it's not right? not dichotomy. And I actually should admit, it's been on my to-do list for a while to buy in Massachusetts some like edible or buy weed legally. I, um, yeah. Haven't done that in Massachusetts, let's put it this way. <laughs> uh, uh, and I, I wonder what that experience is like, because I get, I think it's fully legal in Massachusetts. And, and so I wonder what legal drugs look like to, to me. You know, I grew up with even weed being like, you know, not, it's like this forbidden thing, you know, not, not forbidden, but it's illegal. You know, most people, of course, I never partook, but uh, most people I knew would uh, attain it illegally. And so that big switch that's been happening across the country, there's like federal stuff going on to make uh, marijuana legal federally. I, I'm, I'm half paying attention. There's some movement there. I yeah. mean, the House passed a bill that's not going to be passed by the by the Senate, but yeah, it, it's but, but progress. It's if, there's there's yeah. clearly a change. In, in, right, it's moving in a trend. So yeah. that's the example of a drug that uh, used to be illegal and is now becoming more and more and more legal. Uh, so like, I wonder what like... Uh, cocaine being legal looks like. Right. What a society with cocaine being legal looks like, the rules around it, the, you know, the processes in which you can consume it in a safer way and be more educated about its consequences, be able to control dose and like purity much better, be able to get help for overdose. I don't know, all those kinds of things. Right. I, it does, in a utopian sense, feel like legalizing drugs at least should be talked about and considered versus uh, keeping them in the dark. I but, agree. But yeah, so that in your sense, it's possible that in 50 years uh, we legalize all drugs and uh, it makes for a better world. The way I like to talk about it is that 
I would say that we it's possible and it would probably be a good thing if we regulate all drugs. How would you regulate uh, like cocaine, for example? Is there is there ideas there? So, yeah. And you were already, you know, going, you know, where I was going with that kind of first I described how there's always a new ones and even like the, the cannabis in Massachusetts, federally illegal. So, for example, if I was like and I've. I, you know, I have colleagues that do cannabis research where they get people high in the lab, like you're a federal funded researcher with NIH funds. You can't get that that stuff from the dispensary because oh, it's you're breaking a federal law, even though the feds don't have the resources to go after. They don't want the controversy at this point to go after the individual users or even the the sellers in those legal states. So there's always this nuance, but it's it's about right the right regulation. So I think we already know enough that, for example, like I think safe injection sites for hard drugs. Um, makes a lot of sense. Like I wouldn't want, um, heroin and cocaine at the convenience stores. And I don't think maybe there's some extreme libertarians that want that. I think even the folks that identify as libertarians, probably most of them don't, well, I don't know, like not all of them want that, you know? (laughs) Um, I think, you know, that as a form of regulation, like, look, if you're using these hard drugs on a, on a regular basis, you're putting yourself at risk for lethal overdose. You're putting yourself at risk for catching um, HIV and and hepatitis. Um, if you're going to do it, if you're doing it anyway, come to this place where at least you're not like, you know, like pulling the the, the water out of like, you know, the puddle on the side of the street. Yeah, so it's Just, done by professionals and those professionals are able to educate you also. So like a 7-Eleven clerk may not be both capable of, of helping you to uh, to inject the drug properly, but also won't be equipped to educate you at but the negative consequences, all those kinds of things. That's a huge part of it, the education. But then I I think with the opioids, like the the big part of it is just like with naloxone, which is an antagonist, it goes into the um, the, the receptor. It's called Narcan. That's the trade name, but it's what they revive people on an opioid overdose. That's almost completely effective. Like if there's a medical professional there and someone's ODing on an opioid, they're virtually guaranteed to live. Like that's remarkable that if 100% at the opioid crisis, you know, if all of those people right now that are dying were doing that in the presence of a medical professional, like even like a nurse with Narcan, there'd be basic almost no deaths. There's always some exceptions, but, you know, almost no deaths. Like that's staggering to me. So the idea that people are Mm -hmm. doing this you know, that we could have that level of positive effect without encouraging the drug. And this is where like you get into this like terrain of like sending the wrong message. And it's like, no, you can do that. You can say like, we're not encouraging this. In fact, probably a, one of the greatest advertisements for not getting hooked on heroin is like visiting a methadone clinic, visiting a safe injection site. Like, like this is not <laughs> like an advertisement for getting hooked on this drug, but knowing that we can save people. Now you have a landscape here because a lot of times it's just like supervised injection, but you bring your own stuff, you know, you bring your mm. own heroin, which could still be, you know, dirty and, and, and filled with fentanyl and fentanyl derivatives, which because of the incredible potency and the more difficulty measuring it, it's and some differences at the receptor. Like you may be more likely, you are more likely on average to lethally overdose on it, you know? So you, you could the, the the level that's been more explored in Switzerland is, is uh in some places is is you actually provide the drug itself and you supervise the injection. So I don't. Do see, you like that idea? Yeah, I the yeah. public health data are completely on the side of there, there's really no credible evidence to this. If we allow that, we're sending the wrong message, and everyone's going to. I mean, I'm not showing up. Like, you know, and it's different by drug. Like, yeah, you, you legalize, you set up cannabis shops and some people are going to say, it's legal. I'm going to go there. I don't yeah. think a whole lot of people are going to go to one of these places and say, I'm going to shoot up heroin for the first time because, and even if like, you know, it's a country of 300 million people. Like, even if someone does that, you have to compare this to the every day people are dying from opioid yes. overdoses, like people's kids, people's uncles, people's like, these are real lives that are being shattered. So you just look at that. And then the other thing, and I know this from having done residential, even like non-treatment research where we just have a cocaine user or something, stay on our inpatient ward for a month and you really get to know them. And sometimes you see, like oftentimes that's the first time this person has had a discussion with a medical professional, any type of professional in their entire life around their drug use, Yeah. even if they're not looking to quit. And it's like, I, I you know, you could imagine that in, in these safe injection settings where it's like, it might be a year into treatment. And they're like, 
you know, doc, I know you're not the cops. Like you really care for me. Like, yeah. I think I'm ready to try that methadone thing. I think yeah. I'm really, I Just think I want to be done. a conversation about it, yeah. Yeah, they get to trust the people and and realize that they're they're there because they truly like, they have a compassion, a love for, for, for this community, like as human beings, and they don't want people to die. And you get real human connections. And that, and again, like those are the conditions where people are gonna ultimately seek treatment. And not everyone always will, but you're go you're gonna get that. And then you're, you know, you're going to get people like looking into treatment options. Sometimes, you know, maybe it's years into to the treatment. So it's like there's just all of these indirect benefits that I think at that level, I don't know if you'd call that legalizing. You know, I think mm -hmm. again, at least well regulated. Right. Whatever you know, that word is. Yeah. Well regulated, but uh, out in the open. Right. Minimizing as many harms as we can um, while not encouraging. I mean, we don't encourage people to drink all the, I mean, people die every year from caffeine overdose. Like, mm -hmm. you know, and there's different ways to like, you know, just by allowing something doesn't mean we're sending the message that, you know, by saying we're not going to give you a felony, which is actually often the, 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 the penalty for, for psychedelics. I just actually testified for the Judiciary Committee, the, the Senate, uh, the Assembly in, in New Jersey. And um, j just to move psilocybin from a felony to misdemeanor <laughs> they use different language in new jersey it's weird but like the equivalent of felony and misdemeanor and that was like two people didn't vote for that on the on this committee wow. because it was might one of them said it might be sending the wrong message and it's like a felony i mean there's real harms like that's the scarlet letter the rest of your life you're stuck at the lower ends of the employment ladder you're not going to get you know loans for education all of this, maybe because of a stupid mistake you made once as a 19 year old. Yeah. Doing something that like, you know, a presidential candidate could have done and admitted to and had no problem, you know? Yeah.